Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Hi, once again for the Growing in Grace podcast. I'm Cap, Mike Kapler. Joel Brzezicki is with me, the Breeze Man, and we're here to hopefully give you a chance to get some rest. What's your, what has your week been like? How about your month? How about your life? Mm. <laughs> and and whatever experiences you've had regarding religion, Christianity, churchianity, and all the things that, uh, I mean, stop and think back on it uh, if you can. Uh, maybe not right this minute, but... Uh, stop and think back about the the highs and the lows and the ups and the downs and the frustrations of trying to figure God out and trying to do it through a filter at your church, through uh, a, a pastoral teaching, uh, maybe some books you've read, television preachers. I mean, you're, you're, well, how do you know who's right and who's wrong? And is Christianity really like all the other religions out there? It's... I mean, is, is it just another religion, but it just happens to be the right one? Uh, we're going to talk about some of that stuff after we first hear some sort of a dissertation from Joel Brzezicki. la di do la di do I thought, welcome to the show, Tiny Tim. <laughs> there, that's that's my dissertation. I did install a dish washer recently and that that got me tired and exhausted and i needed rest from that <laughs> how's oh man, that let, let this cup pass before me <laughs> yeah really um but yeah because um jesus said come to me and i will give you a religion full of all kinds of rules and things that you better darn well follow and I'll give you a whole bunch of different denominations and a whole bunch of different things that in each denomination that they'll tell you you have to do. Now, Jesus, Jesus said, come to me and I'll give you rest. And I like how one version, I think it's the message, you know, all of you who are burned out on religion, you know, come, come to me. The coming to Jesus is not meant to be um, coming to a religious experience or, or a life of religion. You know, I think a lot of people have been burned out on the Christian religion. And again, it takes many different forms. You've got lots of different uh, flavors of, of the religion of Christianity. And like you say, how do you know which one's right? Which, um, But I, I kind of think that there's lots of different, so many different ways to go with this. But I think Adam and Eve kind of not knowing what they were doing kind of stepped into the, the religion. They, they kind of started their religion thing by eating from the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when previously they had life. What they had was life. God gave them life and said, eat, eat from this tree, eat from any tree in this garden and, and eat from the tree of life, but just don't eat from this other one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what they do, they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All of a sudden, they discover that they're naked. All of a sudden, they discover right from wrong, right and wrong. And religion comes from this knowledge of good and evil. And life ends. Religion doesn't give life. You know, religion is what brought death. I'm using a little bit of freedom with my words, but I think a lot of people will understand what I mean in that Christ didn't come to give us religion. He came to restore us to life. And so what Christ did when he went to the cross is he died the death for us because through that knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, through Adam and Eve doing that, you know, sin entered the world and death came through sin. And that's what needed to be taken care of. And so Jesus died the death, the wages of sin is death. Jesus died. He paid the wages for sin. And then he rose again from the dead. And we have risen together again with him. Not into religion, but into life. 
you know, God never came to give a religion. He never sent Jesus to give us a religion. He sent Jesus to restore us to life. And so that's what we have in Christ. And that's what I'm so appreciative about when it comes to what Jesus has done, because it wasn't that, well, these people, they need some rules to follow because that'll, that'll get them in line. Uh, they need some religious rituals to do. That'll get them in line. No, it was never anything like that. It was what they need is life. And so Jesus came, took care of the sin problem through his death on the cross, and took care of the death problem by defeating death uh, and rising again from the dead and then inviting us to be joined together with him in this new life. So that's what we have in Christ, uh, not any type of uh, dead old religion. We are in Christ with with this thing we have in him, this life from a risen Savior who has sent a living spirit inside of us to lead, to guide, to teach. Now, I, I know, I know sometimes we miss it. We we don't always follow perfectly, right? We we aren't always led perfectly. We don't always respond perhaps in the right way when God is trying to show us something. But he's there, and that's his desire. That's his desire is to interact and to commune, to fellowship, to reassure, to comfort. Um, that, that's, that's very different from the thousands of other religions to choose from that are out there. And it is unfortunate because sometimes Christianity, let's just use the word Christianity here. I know for some people that's almost like a swear word because <laughs> they just they think of just um, Christianity as, as a, a, another form of any other kind of religion that's out there. It's just got it's, it's, it's just another version of the same thing because of the way that many churches are, are teaching it which is something we've been trying to combat here for the last 17 years or so on the Growing in Grace podcast, trying to help people break free from mindsets that have led them perhaps further from the truth instead of understanding the truth better. Um, but this, this thing we have in Christ is meant to be completely separated from the rest of that pack of wolves that are out there. Um, it's, it's so unique. It's so special. And so to just lump it into, to define it as a religion in and of itself, you're, you're just stacking yourself up against all the other ones that are out there? No. This thing breaks people free from religious concepts. And, and let, let me just try to define, and, and, and I, I, I think I had this in, in my book, Joel. Uh, I'm not sure how I called it in the book. I, I think at one time I referred to it as a legalism detector but it can also be considered a, a religion detector. Um, because I know some people get confused with why we're down on, on the word religion, and maybe that's the subject for another day, uh, or we could have started out with that, but it's too late now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's start over. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <No. laughs> so well, here, here's, the, here's what I said. I, I said that religion is defined as people trying to do something to get a response from God instead of resting in his response to us. Mm. And so people today and for centuries, whether a Bible was in front of them or not, people are always seeking, frequently anyway, for seeking a, um, a religious source might be, you know, the denominational church, doesn't matter if it's Catholic or Baptist or evangelical or whatever, and just within the, the confines of Christianity, people are seeking somebody to help them make sure that they are pointed in the right direction so that they can experience or receive or make sure of their acceptance from God that they're in right standing with God, that they are forgiven by God, that they have been, you know, considered righteous by God. I mean, wh wh whatever whatever it is, they're, they're, they're fine. How, what do I have to do? Remember what we talked about last week with the rich young ruler? What do I have to do to make sure 
I'm going to have eternal life. This this is the the place where even Christians, believers who have uh, confessed faith in Jesus Christ, they still struggle with this. And now multiply that times 10,000 for people outside of Christianity who are seeking the same thing from another religious source, trying to get some sort of answer, some sort of assurance to, to make sure that, you know, they're they're completely absolved and 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 uh, clean and okay with God. And what do I have to do? Do I have to be dipped in water? Do I take a Eucharist? Do I take communion? Do I bow down at the altar and confess my sins? Do I rededicate my life to God? Start attending church more regularly? Give more money? Tithe? What what do I have to do here? And this is all a scam. It's, it's, it's the religious business, and it's big business, my friends, I'm sorry to say, because Jesus finished everything for us if we would simply believe and trust in what he did and, and confess with our mouth our faith in what Jesus Christ has done as Lord and Savior. Right, yeah, and we've got, you know, I like what John said in John 20, toward the end of the book of John. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of, the, of his disciples, which are, not written in, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may have a religion to follow. No, uh, these are written that you may have words to follow to try to make yourself right with God. No, he says, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. That's what Jesus is about, that you may have life in his name. Somebody asked a question through email. It was a real simple question, but it speaks to what so many people are thinking. Are there any strict rules Christians have to follow? Somebody emailed me with that question. And... That comes from this whole idea of it being a religion that we're supposed to follow. Uh, that we, we need to find what rules we need to follow to keep ourselves right with God. The religious answer would be, well, you need to read all these things that Paul said. There are a lot of imperatives. There are a lot of uh, things that you know are throughout the New Testament scriptures that um, you're supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. And... You know, those things are written for a reason, and we can get great things out of that. You know, some of the things that Paul wrote to the to the churches, really good stuff. I mean, really helpful to them, and, and we can read it today. But it's not about, it's not so much about having a question or having a problem and then finding out what does, what's the religious answer to this. No, it's in Christ, you have life. You have the living Holy Spirit in you. You can communicate directly with Jesus Christ. You can communicate directly with God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, because you don't have a religion that you're following. You have life, and you have his life. That it's because First Corinthians says you have become one spirit with him. So remember that that you've been you've died and you've been uh, raised again together with Christ, and that's that's where you're at right now. This at this very moment. You know, you hit on something really important. All the religions have writings, <laughs> and we've been talking about that, as you said. And we embrace them. We're thankful for them. But you know, I. Somebody posted uh, on social media, they said, Jesus loves me, this I know. How? For the Bible tells me so. Without perfectly accurate scripture, we can't know. You see, there's so much ignorance in a statement like that that I don't even know where to go with that. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, you, you got to know it. I mean, I, I knew for years, Joel, as, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I, I knew God loved me, but I didn't really understand what love was. And only love can teach us love. God is Mm -hmm. love. And and so I went for years without knowing how much God really loved me and how far that love would go. I could take Bible verses uh, until the cows came home and explain to people how they could lose their salvation. I I did it. Mm -hmm. I I was wrong, (laughs) but I was knowledgeable about the Bible. 
and boy, could I piece those scriptures together. Mm -hmm. I could convince a lot of people that they could lose their salvation based upon a variety of different things. So my point here is that this Christian thing, this Christ thing, this life of the Spirit thing, um, this is this is a whole whole different animal than anything else that's out there. It's just so different. It, it is it is beyond religion, and it's real, and it's it's just it's in the moment. It's now. It's life. It's it's the Creator. It, it's it's not just playing a game. Yeah. Yeah, so if there's anything, I mean, there, there's so much to be said about all this, but the, I think the highlight of all this is that we're, we're not following a religion. This is not a religion. It's life. It's God the Father before time began, so to speak, you know, from the foundation of the world. He he planned, just think, just think about your, your God, and it's before the foundation of the world, and you're thinking, all right, during this time when the, you know people are going to be on the earth, and you know what should I what should I do? For, well, let's give them a bunch of rules to follow. That's that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them a religion to follow, and I'm going to give them a bunch of different religions, and then the one's going to be better than the other. No, it, his plan for us has been to, for us to have his life to to he created us in his own image and he created us to live in that image in his image and, and as paul said again as as one spirit with him it's way way more than what a religion could ever do uh for anybody it's life it's it's being joined together with the very god who created us and and who loves us so much i mean love is such a big um is instrumental in all of this it's it's all in god's love uh, that he has given us his life that's what jesus yeah, said and, and there's and there's no fear in in any of that right no f there's no fear in love and it's as you see i think at the end of the book of revelation it's the tree of life. Uh, it's life. It's all about life. And if you have um, any questions about anything, uh, remember, remember that the life of Christ is in you right now, with you, and never has left you, never has forsaken you. No matter what brand of Christian religion you've taken part in or any other religion, if you've come to Christ, you've come to life. You've, you've come to eternal life. And that is right now. Eternal life is right now, and it's found in Jesus Christ. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace. <laughs>